Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. You should always uh, own firearms, I'm all about that, but you should definitely properly secure them. We want it to be responsibly stored, but we want it to be accessible 100%. You want to get to it quickly and just having a plan, um, you know, these aren't horribly expensive products uh, and it's just a, it's a small investment that could you know maybe one day save your life or save somebody else's life. You could take a 28 inch 65 Creedmoor to get the added velocity from the barrel length or you could take a 20 inch 65 PRC and get that same velocity. So now you're a shorter barrel with a suppressor so now it's more ergonomic and it's quieter and you get all the terminal performance at, at the range that you need. It's your responsibility. I'd say it's your obligation to, to train. If you're going to carry, you do have an obligation to be responsible and be as well trained as you can. And we make, just for everybody's knowledge, we make more ammo by orders of magnitude than we did every year since I started there in 2013. Yeah. We've never made more ammo than we do today. Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride, this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and TopRet to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access TopRet as well as other great elite benefits. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are coming at you from NRA annual meetings in Houston, Texas. I'm with Seth from Hornady Ammunition. And you guys are, you know, obviously safe gun ownership and firearm storage is on the forefront of every safe, responsible gun owner's concerns. Not only do you guys make great ammunition, you guys are also, you have a whole entire security line that a lot of people aren't even aware that you have. Right. You know, we got into the security business in 2015 and we purchased the company called SnapSafe. And that's really our first uh, dive into firearm storage. And that quickly evolved into a line of not just SnapSafe products, but also Hornady security products. And we've seen that line of products grow exponentially. You know, when you hear the NSSF say in 2020, there was an estimated 8 million new gun owners. Well, then in 2021, another 8 million. And now we're in 2022. You could be looking at 25 to 30 million new gun owners, uh, not to, you know, add in all the pre-existing gun owners. Firearm storage is an inarguable thing. You can't argue yeah. against, a, you know, properly storing a firearm. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, this, the Hornady security line specifically really addresses a lot of, uh, of those small things like a rapid safe line. For example, you have instant access to the yeah. firearm. They're small, they're portable. We've got one that you can put beside your bed with a clock and a cell phone charging or a USB port on there, uh, stuff you can put in your vehicle. And with all these new gun owners and all these new concealed carriers, you know, there's a lot of places that you can't carry your firearm into. Say you're going into a bank, for example. Well, do you take your pistol and you put it in the glove box or under your seat? Is that the right thing to do? You know, maybe, maybe not. So now you've got security options that you can take with you that travel well. And then with the rapid safe line, they use an RFID chip to open the safe. And you can program a hundred safes, a thousand safes to one reader. So you put one reader on your watch band or on the back of your phone. Or you on your key ring for your, for your car keys. Absolutely. You know, or if you have it 
in a secret location in your home kind of stored. Um, there's a lot of people I know that create safe spaces in their home where they Absolutely. have a dis defensible area and in there they, they store obviously resources that they might need in an emergency situation and you know having that stored somewhere where your family members know where it's at and they can access that quickly and easily is you know it's always a great plan absolutely and you and yeah you really can't argue against that type of mentality you should always uh own firearms i'm all about that but you should definitely properly secure them uh, you know a big one not just from theft and from nefarious type of activity but uh, i've got young children at home and that's the last thing that they need to find and uh you know our house is a gun culture type house. That's how I grew up. That's how my kids are growing up. And, you know, they're, I train them and, and help instruct them to understand, you know, how powerful these tools are, but also how useful they are. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to rely on knowing that, hey, you know, don't touch dad's guns. No, you, you lock them up. That's the responsible thing to do. And uh, yeah, our line, we have an engineer dedicated to the design of new security products, and he's doing a great job. And uh, the Rapid Safe line. Uh, on the SnapSafe side, we've got this one box that it's new for 2022. If you haven't seen it, you have to check it out. It's called the Glide Vault, and we, what we tried to do was make it more unassuming. So uh, it's—I don't know the exact dimensions. It's roughly 14 by probably 12 and maybe six inches tall, but it's powder co coated light gray, and it's got a mirrored glass uh, front. Uh, it's a touchscreen spring assist drawer and it's battery operated it also has a barrel key backup of mm -hmm. course but the reason it's battery operated is because you now you can float this piece of furniture uh you know where normally a safe is black and maybe mm -hmm. tactical looking well this thing matches the decor of a lot of homes mm -hmm. and it's you know it's a textured uh metal so you could refinish it but it's light gray uh, you could put it in, under a coffee table, under a, a side table, and um, you know maybe in your kitchen or something because it looks more elegant. Mm -hmm. And now you can just start to expand that responsible storage into a bunch of different rooms of your home and not create an eyesore and kind of hide it in plain sight. Yeah, and I think that's for a lot of people. You know, you never know um, it, where you're going to be in your home when when something bad it happens right um, somebody breaks in a back door front door and having uh, multiple lines of security within your home or defensible areas because there's a lot of people myself included I come home and you know you kind of have to I want to take a breather okay we're I'm gonna take my firearm off my body I'm gonna store it um, safely or I'm gonna have it in a location where I can quickly access it and having multiple locations in your home really is key because you just don't know where 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 you're going to need your firearm 100 percent. we yeah we want it to be responsibly stored but we want it to be accessible 100 percent. you want to get to it quickly and just having a plan um you know these aren't horribly expensive products mm -hmm. uh and it's just a it's a small investment that could you know maybe one day save your life or save somebody else's life uh if it's secure uh but also accessible so moving on to your guys' bread and butter, which obviously is ammunition, yeah. um, Ruger acquired the Marlin Company. And with that, uh, the 4570 has been kind of reinvigorated and has been wildly popular. Uh, straight wall cartridge. And I must say this thing, when you shoot it, it is, <laughs> you better hold on. <laughs> yeah. It is, um, you know, just designed for the ultimate in big game hunting from you know, obviously it was originally kind of like that uh, iconic buffalo gun of America. Right. And now, you know, people are taking them to Africa to, for Cape Buffalo. They're taking them, you know, for big game in the U.S., dangerous game. Mm -hmm. It's a really great cartridge. And you guys have now added the subsonic line to that, correct? Yeah. So, the, yeah, the 4570. I mean, one of the one of the iconic big game cartridges. And like you said, it's used all over the world. Well, there's so many 4570s mm -hmm. out there already. There's a, a lot of people using them to shoot deer, you yeah. know, in, in the back 40. And so it's always been a popular cartridge for us. And, uh, you know, we have that subsonic line of ammunition. And you were talking, it's a big cartridge. It's a handful to it shoot. It is. And subsonic ammunition, uh, really the whole purpose of that is let's make it fun. You know, shooting is fun. Hornady mm -hmm. sells fun in a lot of instances. And we cut the recoil down significantly. Mm -hmm. Uh, running these things at subsonic velocities now we're running them about 1050 feet, feet per second so it's below the sound barrier with uh, the 4570 uses a 410 grain bullet so it's mm -hmm. this huge bullet but because it's below the speed of sound and we're using a very small powder charge there's no recoil so one it's a joy to shoot 
But not only is it fun to shoot, you don't sacrifice terminal performance. The Sub-X bullet, which is the heart of subsonic ammunition, was designed to expand down to 900 foot per second. And if you launch out of the muzzle at 1,050, you know, 900 you would think would be pretty close. Well, because that bullet doesn't have to fight that oncoming air at supersonic speeds, it doesn't decay velocity very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you'll have reliable terminal performance below the speed of sound out to two, 300 yards. Uh, and it makes the 4570 just a joy to shoot. And ever since Ruger uh, fi you know, started shipping those, mm -hmm. those new 4570s, our ammo plant has been running 4570 ammo around the clock. So yeah. the demand is there and they obviously did a great job with the rifle. Um, the subsonic ammunition has been around for a couple years now. One addition though, new uh, for 2022 mid-year launch here at the NRA show is those sub X bullets across all of our sub X ammunition. The projectiles are now available to the reloader. So if you oh, want to that's reload, fantastic. Yep, you can get those bullets uh, and you can reload them. You know, it doesn't have to be subsonic. You can run a reduced load still above the speed of sound, but mm -hmm. cut that recoil way down, uh, make them much funner to shoot, and also, you know, have the terminal performance to, to go with it. And that really is nice, especially for the, the hunter getting ready for a dangerous game hunt or mm -hmm. ready to go to Africa. You want to practice with your firearm. Absolutely. Practice on the sticks and, and various positions. Well, now you can you can get more practice in without beating yourself up yeah. and shooting full house loads all the time. It's really a, a nice option that we're extending to the reloader. That is the first time that I've ever, shooting my 4570 is the first time I ever put on one of those shoulder patches, yeah. pads, where I was like, okay, I have to put this on because this thing, I mean, it is it is, it is, is punishing to shoot. Mm -hmm. So the, the subsonic line is really taming that down, making it a lot more user-friendly, hunting-friendly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hey, if you take your rifle and you couple it with a suppressor, it's, I mean, it's even Match better. Match heaven. Yeah, it's even better. So it's really taking a lot of these... Um, very effective cartridges for big game and making them to where they're like you said a lot more fun to shoot so yep. also new for this year you guys have launched the 6.5 prc in the sign behind us the new cx bullet which is your monolithic bullet and a lot of people i think that are maybe listening don't know the difference what is a monolithic bullet mm -hmm. so let's take this back to like super basics we have you know traditional lead ammunition and monolithic ammunition which is a all copper uh ammunition so it's it's uh compliant in states that don't allow lead like for example california mm -hmm. um and that whole outfitter line of ammunition is in monolithic bullets yep. in your monolithic bullet technology right yeah and, and it does cater to states that may have lead restrictions or areas that do but really that's the least of our concerns the, the monolithic bullets so we use a, an alloy of copper and zinc, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit softer than pure copper, so it doesn't quite foul your barrel near as bad. It's a little bit easier to manufacture. So a monolithic bullet is less dense than a lead core bullet because lead is more dense, right? So it's, got, it's heavier. It's so heavy. uh, monolithic bullets are a little bit light for caliber, but what they make up for it or how they make up for it is, is weight it retention weight retention and penetration these bullets if you look at you know that picture behind me they look that beautiful mushroom they will retain mm -hmm. 95 to 99 percent of their weight and they will penetrate every bit of two to three feet uh that's that's, that's incredible penetration yeah. that's, so, that's terminal performance that's right. what you're looking for on, yep. on big game hunts right for sure so that's really the the advantage of monolithic bullets is Yes, they're lead-free, and if you're into that sort of thing, that's cool too. However, the terminal performance benefits are huge. If you take a quartering away shot or a quartering toward shot or a brisket shot or through both shoulder blades, mm -hmm. this thing is going to get in through those, those shoulder blades, through that thick hide, into the vitals, mm -hmm. uh, transfer energy well. They expand incredibly rapidly despite their high weight retention. Uh, so the terminal performance is really the hallmark of a monolithic bullet. Now, there are some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of a monolithic bullet is when you look at terminal performance, velocity makes a bullet work. Absolutely. So energy, people get caught up on energy, uh, and it really has nothing to do with it uh, as far as killing goes. Um, you can have all the energy in the world, but if the bullet doesn't expand, you're not going to transfer it. So when you look at the equation for energy, you square velocity, right? Velocity squared. So that's a, a big part of it. So velocity makes a bullet work. A lead core bullet doesn't require as much velocity to open it up because lead is soft and it flows. Mm -hmm. So you can impact, like with our ELDX that I know you've used oh, yeah. all over the world. Absolutely. Those will expand down to 1,600 feet per second of impact speed. Well, a monolithic bullet, we recommend 2,000 foot per second of impact speed. Okay, so 
there are some limitations. You limit your distance. Absolutely. Right? So to, to bring monolithic bullets into the year 2022, we took a hard look at our traditional lead, or excuse me, lead-free bullet, which was the GMX bullet That's we great. launched in 2009, mm -hmm. and it's a great bullet. But we used the Doppler radar. We used a bunch of the techniques from the ATIP and from the ELDX development to find how can we make this bullet better so it retains more velocity downrange. So, so that, that you can increase your range, effective range yeah. as well. Yep, and it's, yeah, it's twofold. So not only you're, are you increasing your range, at traditional range, you're impacting with more speed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a win-win. And, and how we did that was uh, we looked at the grooves that are on the bullet, okay. and those grooves on the bullet are necessary. You have to have those on a monolithic bullet because it's a non-compressible material for, for the most part. As it engraves into the bore, your pressures want to rise. Yes. Well, a lead core bullet's a little softer. It's a little more forgiving. So those grooves reduce the bearing surface and reduces the pressure. So you have to have them. And we know if you put a groove on a bullet, you're going to increase the drag. You're going to decrease the BC. And so it's not a good thing from an exterior ballistic standpoint. Um, so how can we make that better? And so we looked at the geometry of the groove. And, you know, our senior ballistician asked, you know, why is the groove cut that way? Why is the groove that shape? And the answer was because that's the shape of the cutter that cuts the groove. Because that's how we've done it. Yeah, so it was great. How can we refine so that? So let's do this different. Yeah, so we went through a bunch of iterations on uh, trying different grooves, and we found a depth and a shape that reduced the drag pretty significantly when compared to a traditional groove. And so that you was... maintained your BCs. Yeah, so now we, we picked up some drag efficiency such to the point that it began to uh, deform the polymer tip in flight. Uh, we can get into that. It's kind of a whole other topic, but the aerodynamic heating was deforming yes. the tip. And so we put the heat shield tip on there. So now you have the ultimate monolithic bullet. They're in our Ford off ballistic calculator mm -hmm. because the tip's now not deforming. Uh, they have the drag characteristics that you really want. And in some of these new bullets, like the 130 that's featured in the 6.5 PRC, mm -hmm. it's a very similar shape to our 147 grain match bullet. Mm -hmm. I mean, then the 147 ELD match is a juggernaut of a oh, bullet. Oh, yeah incredible uh, design characteristics that make that good for long range shooting so you get the shape drag of a really long ogi bullet long boat tail but you get the terminal performance of a monolithic it's it's a win-win it's huge for us uh, we're excited about it i had the opportunity to hunt with it uh, early on and it's it was phenomenal yeah i'm gonna have to order that for this year i'm 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 starting to calculate a wish list as we all know ammunition can be really difficult to find so <laughs> we're gonna have wish lists now of 4570 subsonic mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're gonna have the cx for the 65 prc which the 65 prc really has changed hunting for me in such a remarkable way i mean in, in the past, historically, you know, I've done moose hunting, and I always brought my trusty 300 Win Mag. You oh, know, yeah. everybody's got one. Ammo's, you know, pretty readily available in every store if they have it um, these days. Yeah. Would be the caveat. Um, and and I always loved that 300 Win Mag because I could just really rely on it. And the 6.5 PRC for me just changed my perspective on everything because it's got. You know, a lot of the similar characteristics of that 300 Win Mag. However, 60% less recoil. Oh, yeah. It's a joy and to shoot. it's incredible to shoot. Um, if I throw my silencer central on my gun, it's like shooting a 6 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's it's unbelievably um, fun to shoot. Um, and and I it's really it's my go-to cartridge anymore. Everybody's like, well, what are you shooting these days? And it's really hard to take my 6.5 PRC out of my hand. Now, if you would have talked to me five years ago, I was obsessed with 6.5 Creedmoor, which mm -hmm. is still one of my favorite cartridges don't get me wrong i've hunted you know elk deer everything with that 6.5 creedmoor but the prc really has just been that next level of innovation from hornady um and i in and i'm really looking forward to trying this oh, yeah. cx bullet i think you'll i think you'll be happy with it the terminal performance is there in spades and then you know in the 6.5 prc vein one of the the hallmarks of it that i find the most enjoyable like you i like to hunt suppressed uh I almost do it exclusively unless there's some sort of situation where, where they legally won't allow me or Which whatever. Which there's 40 states that yeah. allow suppressed hunting. Yeah. So, you know, so we have a lot of opportunity. You talked about the Creed more, and a lot of people joke, you know, it's 6.5 need more. Well, if you take a 28-inch barrel 6.5 Creed more, there's that's 6.5 PRC performance yeah. right there. So you can take a 28-inch 6.5 PRC, or excuse me, 6.5 Creed more to get the added velocity from the barrel length. Or... You could take a 20-inch 6.5 PRC and get that same velocity. Mm -hmm. So now you're a shorter barrel, 
with a suppressor, so now it's more ergonomic and it's quieter, mm -hmm. and you get all the terminal performance at, at the range that you need. So it's it's one of my favorite cartridges. I've shot matches with it, uh, uh, shot yeah deer, and and it's it's just phenomenal. I'll be shooting an ELR match next weekend with the 300 PRC. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. I have not hunted with a 300 PRC yet, uh, but I'm just such a fan of what you guys have done with that precision rifle cartridge series. Um, it's it's been you know from from competition to hunting, um, the whole 6.5 lineup and the 6.5 PRC lineup, uh, uh, 300 win or 300 PRC lineup. Everything has been has been awesome with that. Um, so what else do you guys have out here that's new? Now, if for for the for the reloaders and precision shooters, you guys launched the A-TIPS in what, 2020? 2020. Um, and those have really, A-TIP stands for aluminum. Yep. That has really kind of transformed a lot of the bullet choice that the reloading segment of precision rifle shooters yeah. um, has been choosing. It really is kind of the ultimate bullet. We put uh, a ton of effort. I, I, I wish we would have calculated the hours in research and development on this thing. Uh, it's not a simple, well, we make an ELD match bullet. We'll just put aluminum tip in there and, and swedge it up and we'll call it good. This went through... I, I, again, I, ha I wish I had an estimation on hours. And mm -hmm. so when I was, uh, pr pr previous to me working in marketing, I was doing ballistics for Hornady uh, with our senior ballistician, Jaden Quinlan. So I got to work on the ATIP project. Are you one of the first companies to manufacture an all aluminum bullet? Uh, aluminum tip bullet? No, and to be truthful, we did aluminum tip bullets back in the early 90s with the national match bullets. And I think there's some others out there. What they were missing and what we missed in the early 90s was a a bunch of little things that because of the Doppler radar use and because you know we're looking at drag curves, uh, that's how we were able to really refine that bullet. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we've done a lot with the layout of the mass of that bullet. And that's why these ATIP bullets are really so accurate and so forgivingly accurate, mm -hmm. despite you know twist rates and jump distances and whatever. The ogive d uh, radius is very specific, and that's not an accident. We you know we refined, tested, tested, tested until we found the exact radius that we want. The length of the bearing surface, the way that the mass, the lead is distributed inside the bullet, that really has a lot to do with how this bullet, uh, quote unquote, goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that's getting into gyroscopic and dynamic stability, which again is, is kind of a technically deep uh, topic. So we'll, we'll brush we'll on skip that. skip yeah. over that. <laughs> but needless to say, the A-tip, uh, and it's just remarkably accurate, and the cool thing, what I think the cool thing is, is on a personal level, I sh started shooting competitively in 2013. Mm -hmm. And as I worked at Hornady, since when I started. And if I had a match coming up, I could go out to a, a press operator or go talk to, you know, our director of engineering and say, hey, I need, you know, I was shooting 308 at the time, some 178 boat tail hollow points. And the press operator that was making that bullet could go, I just shot these for accuracy. They shot a 10 shot group at 200 sub half minute and I ran 300 bullets for you consecutive into a box. Here's 300 bullets, and that's bullets one through 300, and these are untouched. And so that was, that was really cool to me yeah, as a competitor. You got to be part of it. Yeah, so now with the A-tip, we sell those bullets that way. And this is the first time that's ever been done in the industry. So when you buy a box of A-tip bullets, that's bullets one through 100. And if you buy 500 in a sleeve, that's bullets 100, 1 through 500. Interesting. They're consecutive. They're never touched by human hands. Uh, and they come consecutively off the press, and they're packaged accordingly in those trays that way. And that's never been done before. And does it make a huge difference? Probably not. But it's that extra little, little step. Yeah, it's that 1% of consistency that's that right. normally you couldn't control. And Hornady does manufacture to exacting standards. And you guys really do everything you can to make sure that your machines are putting out bullets that are exactly the same. Um, and, and that goes with a lot of testing and measuring and quality control on your side. But this is really taking that exacting principle that Hornady is based on, and you guys are taking it super next level. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's really what you're looking for with precision shooting now. I'm just learning to reload. Actually, I'm coming out to the factory next week awesome. to do a whole series of reloading. My dad's reloaded. Um, 
And, you know, I know you can really go down a rabbit hole with reloading. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> um, so up until now, I have always, you know, I've bought my ammunition from Hornady. And um, I'm really excited to learn some basics of reloading so that I can, you know, put these A-tips to work. Yeah. And, and put them in, you know, competition or just shooting. You know, my range right now at home is set up. I have steel to 1,400 yards and I have capability of going beyond. I'm just, I have to order some larger steel yeah. sizes. <laughs> um, but, it, I mean, it, it's really actually fun because I can go from, okay, I'm going to confirm my data at distance and then I have a 300-acre prairie dog town. <laughs> and we're now we're going to, now we're just going to see how accurate and how exact we can be with prairie dogs at distance. It, yeah. It's super fun. Oh, yeah. Um, and taking a bullet like this and putting it in and in, in really testing it um, on on that is it, it's helping my marksmanship skills oh, sure. tremendously because those prey dogs are so narrow. If your bubble level's not perfect or if your position isn't great or your uh, fundamentals are off at all, um, oh boy, you really, <laughs> yeah. you can see it for sure. That little stuff makes a big difference in practicing on small targets at distance. When you get an elk size target at a, you know, a, a realistic hunting distance, it's mm -hmm. it's a chip shot after Comes that. Comes a lot easier. Yeah. And yeah. the reloading thing, it's such an enjoyable hobby. It's a cathartic hobby. Uh, and like you said, the rabbit hole goes real deep it's, if you want to chase it, but yeah. it's a lot of fun to do. Well, and just listening to you talk mentally, I see you stopping yourself from going so deep on that. And um, I'm sure my uh, most of my listeners would appreciate that <laughs> to, to some degree. And then there's going to be others that are like, oh, go there. I want to yeah, hear this. Sure. Why is he stopping? So let's, let's kind of switch gears and talk a little bit about... Um, personal protection yeah and obviously right now you know being your own first responder is on the forefront of everyone's um, concern and having the ability to be your own first responder you know you guys have making uh, defense ammunition for years from critical defense mm -hmm. to uh, critical defense light yeah um, and you know as a as a female shooter you know having those lighter loads um, basically uh, help you control, you know, muzzle flip mm -hmm. and muzzle rise and, um, you know, recoil and help you control your firearm a little bit better. It, it just makes a lot of people a lot more comfortable shooting. Um, I think the training component um, of it, it, for me, the light ammunition isn't necessarily what I always carry, but I train with it mm -hmm. and I practice with it and I get comfortable shooting that. And then I put my, my full load defensive ammo in my pistol and, and, and run that instead. Um, but everybody has their own philosophy of why you'd want light ammo versus standard. Sure. Yeah, there's yeah, a bunch of different opinions. And, and the reality is I know there's a buying surplus right now. I, I hesitate to say an ammo shortage uh, just to take a quick uh, tangential point here. We make, just for everybody's knowledge, we make more ammo by orders of magnitude than we did every year since I started there in 2013. Yeah. We've never made more ammo than we do today. So yeah. it's hard to say an ammo shortage when we're putting it out as fast as we are. But well, people are buying and storing. Yeah. So I was going to say that one of the biggest things, and, and you touched on it, was just, just shoot. Yeah. See what you like. Get to a controlled environment and try your different ammo mm -hmm. and, and different you know, get your grip the, and so that you're consistent and then practice and practice and mm -hmm. practice. And you can find, okay, you know, the, the critical defense light doesn't flip the muzzle as bad. I'm back on target quicker for a follow-up shot. I'm mm -hmm. going to run with that. Or, you know, I've got, you know, a good grip and the gun fits me really well and I can, the extra muzzle flip of a full house load is, is a non-issue. The biggest thing, find what works for you. Yeah. And just know that just because it says light on the box and it's in pink and it's kind of geared towards uh, the female shooter. Well, I've you guys did a breast cancer awareness did, yeah. um, and, and contributed for, you know, cancer research right. with that. So that's kind of where the pink comes from. It's not um, condescending to females. No. And I don't want ladies out there to be like, oh, well, they, you know, this kind of condescending because they pinked the box. It's actually a, a kind of a co-brand for cancer research. Right. Absolutely. So there's that. And where I was going with that blends into that exactly, that just because there's pink on the box, that 100 grain bullet in nine mm -hmm. millimeter, I've shot that into ballistics gelatin many, many times. Mm -hmm. It performs really well. I have no qualms putting that in my personal nine millimeter and carrying that. I, I believe in it. So just because it's reduced recoil does not mean you're getting reduced terminal performance. Mm -hmm. That bullet is incredibly reliable mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, just get out there and shoot. I know that's hard to say to people when ammo is really hard to find or you have ammo but you're afraid to shoot it because you might not be able to replenish it. So when things come around and, and you've, you've got a, a 
stock of ammo that you feel comfortable training with, and you should be training, yeah. um, get out there and find what works for you. And yeah, you'll you'll feel better about it. You'll be more confident carrying, and that's really what it comes down to. Is when you have that peace of mind, uh, that's worth its weight in gold. Well, and a lot of training, you know, that I do at home is dry fire. Yeah. You know, I have a secure room. My ammunition is not in the same room as my firearm, and um, it's a dry room, sterile room, whatever whatever terminology you want to use, and practicing drawing from the holster. You know, a lot of people are concealing, they're carrying. Practice what, what you're comfortable with dry. Get to where you can be rhythmic and comfortable with that and then take it to the range and that'll really uh-huh. save you a lot of ammunition i mean there's ways to train and be a safe responsible concealed carrier yep. um, without actually firing a shot and i don't want to diminish the value of live fire or actually shooting i, I want to just um talk about like hey you can do this dry at home and then when you get to the range you can use less actual live rounds and get a lot of training value out of that and I, I really think if you're going to carry it's really valuable that you spend some time and dedicate yourself to training. A hundred percent you have to do it it's your responsibility I'd say it's your obligation mm-hmm. to, to train if you're going to carry you do have an obligation to be responsible and be as well trained as you can and the dry fire practice as a long-range competitor you can you could see my change in score when mm-hmm. I spend more time dry firing. Yeah. Uh, I would love to get out and run my rifles out to a thousand yards every day and, and practice off barricades stuff, but I just can't do it. It's not realistic. Yeah. But when I do dry fire training, I perform better at the match. And you know, when you're making it useful, dry fire training, I think is big. Mm-hmm. You can sit there and you're on your chair and pull the trigger, but if you're being, you know, purposeful with your training, yeah. dry fire can be uh, monumental and very effective. Absolutely. So what other new products does Hornady have out this year or or Keystone products that, you know, people just can't get enough of? Well, the the can't get enough uh, critical defense 9mm. <laughs> that is our most popular SKU yeah. is the 115 critical defense, but we do have some uh, mid-season launches that uh, we are launching here at the NRA show is the first time they're being seen. We already talked about the Sub-X mm-hmm. component bullets. Uh, the next one is a security product, and it's a really cool security product that logistically took a little bit of extra time to get uh, everything lined up, but now we're ready to go, so it's a mid-season launch for us. And if you haven't seen them, you'll have to check them out. They go great in anybody's room or garage or gun room. Uh, it's a ammo cabinet. It's a steel cabinet assembled in the USA. They're 12 inches deep. Uh, 18 inches wide and 40 inches tall, so it'll fit an AR-15. Uh, they come with shelves, some ammo cases. Each shelf will hold 100 pounds. Oh wow! And they're modular, and they're uh, they use our patented square lock system, so they're modular. So if you want one, fine. If you want it. 20, you could have a whole wall full of them, and they look really elegant. Uh, they're useful, and I think the big push for that was you have you know a, a rifle, an optic. You know, okay, you're going to put that in a safe one because it's firearm but two because it's valuable it's expensive Mm -hmm. well now with the price of ammunition uh, being driven by consumer demand and people paying third parties that are gouging prices oh you get you get two or three cases of ammo it's worth a lot of money five hundred dollars a case yeah that's a that's an incredible high amount of value so we give you some security options so Mm -hmm. yeah that's the ammo cabinet and then the last thing we're launching mid-season at the nra show is critical defense line is obviously our most popular and it is in my opinion, it is the best defensive ammunition on the market. Um, Federal introduced the 30 Super Carry cartridge, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to support that cartridge with ammo, so that'll be available in the in the critical defense line, the 30 Super Carry. Okay, yeah, so it's tons of great stuff here um, that you guys are doing that you're manufacturing from the shooting sports component of you know precision rifle shooting and competing to hunting to personal protection to really, you know, what is uh, the forefront of everybody's concern is that we all want to be and feel safe. Absolutely. And you guys are making products here to where we can safely store and we can actually defend ourselves and and, and not only feel safe, but to have the ability to provide. Absolutely. Um, I think it's such an important thing. People are learning, especially with COVID and food shortages, and um, we're learning the value of being able to provide and being self-sufficient and being able to hunt and um, that that is that is something that you guys you know really hold dear with your company and you know being a safe responsible gun owner and also hunter um, you guys are, are making it all come together and um, if you guys haven't already um, checked out Hornady Ammunition or Hornady Security I encourage you all to get online and do so and if you have questions their website is 
a plethora of information. They've got fantastic videos. You guys do an yeah. incredible job Thank you. explaining. Um, I don't think there's not a company that I work with that does a better job of explaining their product from a video standpoint than you guys do. So those questions are all easily answered online. Do you guys have a customer service I department was, also? I was going to say uh, this is a great plug and a, and a shameless plug because this is the department I started on in 2013 when I started was technical service. And that is a... The, the, the phone number is 800-338-3220. Press extension 3 to talk to tech. And there's a team of guys, and they answer the phone. I think it's 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of them are up there. 8 to 12 guys, but they all hunt. They all shoot. They all reload. Almost all of them shoot competitively, and they all know our product inside and out. So if you have a question about a specific product or a specific product application or mm -hmm. a, a reloading technique or a recommendation on twist rate or external ballistics or you want to talk terminal performance or you've got a hunt coming up and you want to talk bullet selection mm -hmm. you got any questions whatsoever give them a call and these guys know their stuff and a lot of them have their individual specialty you know if you're calling up and you're just getting into the prs game yeah. well there's three guys up there that compete in prs you know, all the time, and they'll be happy to walk you through some stuff. So, yeah, the, the technical service team at Horny, just a, a great opportunity to gain some insight if you can't find what you need on YouTube or on online. And also, you guys have an actual reloading book that you mm -hmm. publish about every four years, and um, that is a tremendous wealth of knowledge as well. So if you are, you know, at home and you're wanting to reload and you're working on your load development, um, that book is is kind of the Bible, if you will, of yeah. of where to where to go, how, how to do things, where to start, um, what powder charges to load. I mean, all of that is in there. So if you guys are new or you're just looking for an additional resource to add to your uh, wealth of knowledge, yeah. that book is very valuable as well. It really is. I, I call it the cookbook. And not only is it a cookbook because it's got all the, the load recipes. recipes in it, <laughs> but like you said, it's also kind of the Bible because the first 150 pages or so has a, a, a big chunk of internal ballistics, yeah. uh, external ballistics, uh, how to set your sizing dies, how to set your seating dies. It really walks you through everything step by step, how to clean brass. Uh, so you get, you know, the, the Bible portion of it, which is, you know, how to do the processes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you get the recipes of, of everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. You guys, thank you so much for taking the time with me. I know you guys are so busy here at this convention, and I just want to thank you. And for all of you, again, go online to Hornady's website, check out their security products, check out their ammunition if you're a reloader or if you want to just go buy a box off the shelf. They make ammunition for you, and they make it to exacting standards, and they, you guys are doing an absolutely incredible job. And uh, what I love about your company is it's right here in uh, Nebraska, yeah. in the USA, and that is a very important thing. So. It really is. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Glad to chat. And, if, yeah, if you want to do another podcast about any other topic, we've got a wealth of knowledge that work at our factory from our ballisticians, the engineers, you name it. And, yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to be at the factory <laughs> next week. Fair enough. <laughs> you guys, thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. A buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake. The quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake. And big game butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the grow, scout, or hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrackone.com. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.